Hey traders, David Frost, my strategic forecast. You're here for another episode of Common Sense Market Analysis. Today is Tuesday, March 15, 2022. We're looking at a daily chart of the SPY or Spider, which is the proxy for the S&P 500. What do we have on the docket today? Well, actually, there's a lot going on in the docket, so let's go through the stuff one by one. We're going to take a look at the daily chart, see what's jumping off the page, but the first thing is we're still in a downtrend, but we get big swings in both directions. The rip-your-face-off rallies in the middle of a downtrend are violent, they're fast, they're hard, they issue pies in the face. That's the way it works. Yesterday, we talked about the February low again, and if they were going to shimmy their way down to test the low, break the low, what we said was they would likely rip them back up in the other direction. Now, we have Kabuki Theater on tap. That's one of the other things going on this week. The Fed meeting starts today. It culminates tomorrow with an interest rate announcement. The marketplace is expecting a one-quarter of 1% or 25 basis point rate hike. If the market gets something different, it may go haywire. The market may go haywire anyway. When you have Kabuki Theater, which is the reason it's called Kabuki Theater, for a moment in time, we have to kind of throw the charts out the window. The numbers work. If they're headed to a destination far away, they're headed to a destination far away. But the in the middle of the day whipsaw type activity is part and parcel to why it's called Kabuki Theater. We get rumors leading up to the announcement. We have Russia on the table. We get rumors each and every day, all day, with Russia and the Ukraine. They're striking a deal. They're not striking a deal. They're bombing in the Ukraine. They're going to have a ceasefire. It's everything in between. So the news cycle, and what I called it today in the Inside the Numbers commentary right out of the shoot is... We have a rumor mill operating at full capacity. Let's go back to a couple of other things we discussed of late. A, tomorrow is an on-time day. Now, if they went down today and down into tomorrow leading into the Fed meeting started to reverse, that might be interesting information, but that's not what happened. So what we have on the table is, instead of going down into the Fed meeting, now what we have is, and this is something that we discussed probably at least half a dozen times is that this is institutional buying down here. They're going to play defense down here, special teams defense, goal line defense, whatever kind of defense they have, they're likely going to play defense to defend the February turnaround or the February reversal. So far, that is taking place. How can I say that? Because they've had every opportunity to collapse here, here, overnight several times, and they just didn't do it, hence defense sent out onto the field. Some folks might call it the plunge protection team. I don't care what you label it, they're on the field. Let's do something else. As crazy as this may sound to some folks, this is by definition a pullback, a bullish wedge or pullback pattern that will generally result in not only a move in the upward direction, but when we have a reversal and they try and break down and they can't break down and we have a pullback pattern that lasts a couple of weeks, more than a couple of weeks, we'll say about three weeks, if they're not going to collapse, the energy will be released in the upward direction. And it's not a little bit of energy and it doesn't all have to happen in one shot, but there can be a big rally higher from here. Let me repeat myself. There can be a big rally higher from here. There's a lot of pent-up demand on the short side. If the shorts feel the need to squeeze themselves out, meaning cover, they get squeezed out, the market will send price higher in a hurry. Let me just pick that apart for a second. We've seen this many times before. And by the way, The umpire calling balls and strikes is fully aware that leading into or right after the Fed meeting, I should say, they could certainly collapse the tape. Anything is possible, but it goes both ways. There's energy built up in the market. It's going to be released in one direction or another, and it likely begins 
tomorrow afternoon. Let me throw something else into the mix. Here's a garden variety trend line. Now they tried to break above, but they couldn't sustain price and failed. And then over here again, they came right up to the trend line, which tells you that this trend line is important. Let me reiterate something, and this is something I teach in the class, Lazy E-Mini Trader. It's not my trend line. It's not your trend line. It's the trend line the market drew by coming up to price and getting rejected. I would say this is a item we want to keep on the board just in case we start to get a rally after the Fed announcement, buying begets buying, short covering sets in, panic buying takes over, and the squeeze is on. It takes the bull case off the table, at least from a temporary basis. Let's say they're not rallying higher tomorrow on Wednesday after the Fed announcement. Let's say they're falling apart. Let's say they're coming down. What happens if they can't sustain above 417? 417 is an important number. You might want to put that on a sticky note. If they start trading below 417, then they're going to start retesting the lows from yesterday, from several days ago, and then we open the door for the Southern type stuff to take place. However, if they're rallying after the Fed announcement and they're pushing higher, I would keep my eye on this trend line. It's not the only thing on the board, but it's one of the things on the board. Inside the number members will have the specific numbers that they need to watch where price, if it gets above, will promote behavior up to the next number. And if price can't get above, we could have a rejection on our hands. All those numbers will be posted on the board at zero dark 30. Before we get into inside the numbers, there's a couple of things I'd like to go over. One of them is a reminder. It's one of my favorite indicators. And this really isn't from Joe's Indicator Shop where they sell the MACD, the RSI, the VWAP, the whatever WAP, any WAP you can find, none of that stuff. I'm talking about my own personal indicators this one, and we've discussed it many times, is called the email indicator. More specifically, this is the chart I'm talking about. It's linked to the email indicator. And why is it blank? Because I don't want to show you what it is. It's from the lazy swing trader. It's an active trade we're currently in. It's an option trade. Doesn't matter what time frame this is. Maybe it's a 60 minute chart. Maybe it's a daily chart. Doesn't make a difference. However, what we do know is that this is a bullish pattern, and this, unless it falls apart, is about to explode higher. Now, yesterday, price was down here, and traders, not just one, not just two, but several traders were saying, hey, should we cut out of the trade? It's not working. What do you mean it's not working? We've been in the trade for a few days. You're buying stuff when nobody wants to own stuff. You have to have some patience, give it time to work out. All of a sudden, you wake up today, the market's rallying a little bit. Well, it wasn't rallying right when you woke up today, but it rallied today. And guess what? This thing was up 5%. It's not always about what the overall market is doing or not doing. It's about what the individual trade is doing. Every chart is independent of one another. We've seen many times when the market's going down, we're in a swing trade and it's going up and everybody scratches their head because they hit the number and something internally is going on with that particular stock or chart. Case in point, this is a newly issued trade alert from today. Again, it's a blank chart. Doesn't matter what it is, I wanna prove a point. Looks like a reversal candle on whatever time frame this is. Stay with me, there's a method to the madness. If we mark an area down at the bottom near today's low, in fact, we put it at today's low, now let's go back in time and let's see what happens when that line shows up again and what the chart looks like in that area. Let's get the quick drag mechanism going. There it is. Okay. So guess what this is? This, by all accounts, is a former breakout area. The stock, whatever it is, gapped up to this thing. Then it all of a sudden went sideways for a while and then it broke out. Now, what it's done is it's come back to test a former breakout area. Now, that's one thing. Now you put this in the mix, and all of a sudden, this chart happens to be on time. 
you have what's called a full stack. I didn't give you everything. I gave you the main characters. There's all kinds of supporting cast. These are the type of things that I look for for the lazy swing trader. We're not interested in volume of trades. We're interested in being what I like to call a sniper. I'm looking for a specific thing, and when the thing shows up, I don't really care what the name is. I don't really care about much other than is it setting up for a potential full stack type of trade. I don't want to be in 10 trades at once. The odds end up going against you that all 10 are going to work out or 9 are going to work out. I don't want losing trades. We all don't want losing trades. They're going to happen from time to time. But in the Lazy Swing Trader product, we get specific, we get targeted, we get like a sniper. I'm looking for this kind of stuff, a full stack into a number with supporting cast. One more comment on the daily chart of the SPY, which is a breakdown candle and a high. 428.77, you start breaking above that, you're into the 20 period moving average. The next breakdown candle high, you get above that, you're into a gap. All that can happen very rapidly around Kabuki Theater, so pay attention. What's going on inside the numbers? Today we're gonna start from the end for a reason, again, there's a method to the madness. So at 322, we've already pretty much wrapped up the day. In the last hour, hour and a half of trading, you're really in a anything goes scenario. The business is done in the morning for the most part. Traders might be in a trailing position at this time of the day, nevertheless. So if they are, what's the prize? How about 427? What am I talking about? Well, you can see here on the hourly chart, they almost got there. The high was 426. 84 16 cents short of the secondary prize. What do I mean by that? Because the real prize today, and you'll see this earlier, way earlier in the notes, 425.65. That was the prize from way earlier in the day. They certainly spiked it, and you can see they ran several tests at the end of the day back to that number. An important number is resistance until price gets there. When price gets there, if they start getting above and closing candles above, we have to look to the next important number above, so that price by default becomes support. Now let's go to the other side of inside the numbers. What I'd like to do is point out a couple of important things, run through the commentary, let you pause the video, go back to the charts to double check the work. It's turnaround Tuesday. What happened? The market turned around. Shocker. Funny how that works. And overnight, they're still doing the thing where they drip lower toward the February lows. That's what they were doing overnight. However, and again, this is at zero dark 30. This is before this began to happen. As the opening bell grows closer, Trick and Company will likely make it look like another rescue operation underway. They certainly did that. Think about where they finished the day. Think about what we were discussing at zero dark 30. The focus in the early going is 4.15.40. Then they started to get bullish in the pre-market. So we can fast forward to the flip side, which is if they're going to float them, 4.17.50 is important for the bulls and opens the door to run a test of 4.19.50 and then the big fat round number of 4.20. Five minute chart right at the vertical today's activity. You could see 4.20. That's going to be our starting point. We're going to scroll through the notes you're going to see what happens to the numbers as the day grows on. Let's scroll up and see what happens as the day gets underway. By 9 o'clock, as suspected, the appearance of a rescue operation is underway leading up to the opening bell. We've read this book before. Is it a dead cat bounce or a true rescue? Above 420 on candle closes is a good start for the bulls. So you have a starting line. Let's say you knew nothing other than that showing up in the morning and say, hey, if they're above 420, I'm not really looking at the downside. If they're below 420, they could certainly fail. That's a great line in the sand to start the day. Let's keep going. Remember, we've got Russia, we've got Kabuki Theater, the rumor mill will be operating at full capacity. We talked about that. Let's see what else we have. We've got a morning rush on our hands. If they're going to push higher, 421, and it could be 422.25. Now you'll see this number come up over and over, and for good reason. The middle line is now 
25, and you can see, they got to it, they tried to fight their way through, they came back to it, they got above it again, came back to it, they got above it, came back to it. Once they finally broke above, that's when they went to the new number, and you'll see later on in the notes, there was a way station at 424.65, but what happened is, they never actually got there, so when they did finally get there, they already had their hearts set on a new number. Let me scroll up, let you read the notes. You can go back to the charts to double check the work. I gave you the bulk of the stuff for the majority of the day. The prize above 422 was 425.65. That was basically the bottom line. So what you'll see is here, the target becomes 422.25. That's before 10 o'clock in the morning. And again, we'll circle back to stocks on the move. There wasn't that much activity. It was somewhat of a gap and go type of scenario today. So when that happens is a lot of the stocks end up getting a rising tide lift all boats treatment. Let's see what else we have. By 1030, they're doing the thing. 422 and a quarter is important and overhead resistance. Closing candles above opens the door for the discussion around 425, give or take. There's some unfinished business before 425. Call it 424.65. That was the number I just described. They ended up going through it. They came up short first and then went through second. And then we have 425, 70. I called it 65. It's a number in that neighborhood. Let me keep going. Again, pause the video, go back to the charts to double check the work. Some important stuff, only closing candles above, blah, blah, blah. Read the thing if you're at all interested or already active in the market during the trading day. Staying above 422.25 is the extra bull case. Lunchtime, the prize is 425.65. There's a way station, but that's the prize. So as long as they're above 422.25, your eye is set on the prize. Here it is again, 425.65. Read the notes, pause the video, go back to the chart to double check the work. You never know how they're going to get there, but as long as they're above one thing, then your eye is set on the prize. Stocks on the move, we had a laundry list today, but everything kind of took off. One came close, another one did the thing. We'll take a look at Exxon Mobil, and I believe Schlumberger was the other one that came close. Might as well take a look at that chart. Nothing like a heartbreaker. Here's a five minute chart of SLB or Schlumberger. The number on the board bright and early was 38.64. Below here, 38.69 just a nickel away, and they took off, but did it without me. XOM did a little bit of a Macarena in front of the first number. Jordan in the room took a pass. The second number worked out just fine. Where did they go right away? Back to the first number, and then beyond. Therefore, base hits put you in the Hall of Fame. This qualifies as a base hit. What's going on over in Camp IWM? Well, again, rising tide lifts all boats. But what's interesting about the IWM today is it was actually lagging in terms of being up against the S&P 500. So I thought that was interesting information. Now, the folks down at the transportation department were showing relative strength against the S&P 500. So when you have your two favorite market leading indicators, they're both up, one's up less than the other, one's up less than the S&P, one's up more. We're not gonna make a federal case out of that, but I think it's worth noting, either way, still have to get above this breakdown candle high over here at 197.44 to make any hay. But if they do, they'll run into the 20 period moving average and so on and so forth. It's all the same market. If everything's gonna get a lift after the Fed announcement, then a rising tide will lift all boats. If they're gonna pull the rug out or open the trap door after the Fed announcement, everything's gonna fall through just the same. What about the folks down at the transportation department? They are my second favorite market leading indicator, but a number one canary in the coal mine. So let's look at this thing, think about the things we said of late. So what we have here is, it was a different chart, first of all, in a different position. They weren't really looking into the abyss down here. So we have a higher low. We've gotten back above these moving averages. It's in a different position then the other charts, when you flip over to the weekly, we had this bearish, flaggish pattern going on. But remember, this is where they weren't looking into the abyss. We said, look, this is support down here. If this breaks, that's one thing. 
But if they ricochet off that, look what's going on here. They're trending up into the weekly chart, 20 period moving average, and to do what? You got it. Run a test of this breakdown candle high right around 15,900, give or take. If things get haywire and they fall apart after the Fed announcement, all bets are off. They'll get right back below these moving averages, and then whatever is happening, we'll talk about tomorrow. But that's not what the chart is saying today under normal garden variety market conditions, which we won't have tomorrow for at least a period of time. But under normal markets, this is a rescue operation in progress. Second favorite market leading indicator. How about the Q people? They ran a test of the February low, and now they've bounced off of it. Is that a successful test? Is that running a test of a breakup candle low, hint, hint, and going back in the other direction? Well, so far, that's exactly what they did. The only issue is they ran two tests, so you couldn't trust the second one. The first one back here, which was on the 8th of February, pardon me, March, got my months mixed up, that was the first test. Even though they didn't get all the way to the low, they still ran a test. We're just going inside my head how I look at things. It's a dangerous place to be. How about the financials? So again, like every other market, we have some kind of a rescue slash recovery operation underway. All bets are off with the Fed, but we have a gap up here. We call it 38. You have a 20 period moving average. Both those things tend to be magnetic. So if you get any bullish behavior tomorrow, they should work their way up toward 38. If things fall apart, then we're looking at something like this. We have a move down, we have a bearish wedge up into some kind of resistance area, and then they're going to have a resuming move in the other direction. That would be A down here, B up to here, and C as a finishing type of situation. Start closing the day above 38, and it begins hourly and before. Everything morphs from a shorter time frame on from there. Start closing candles above 38, and guess what? Well, all of a sudden, it's the 200-period moving average, which isn't that far away, but they can then get sucked up into 39 and beyond to run a test of the convergence of the 150-period moving average. That's the way the financials will work unless they fall apart. 38 is the key number. It's important. It's overhead resistance. It's important. Squared. What about Smash Mouth? Yesterday they're going into the abyss. Today they have a reversal up 4%. Don't gloss over 4%. That's a big deal. Sure, short covering in there, absolutely, but it's still up 4%, finished near the highs of the day. That's bullish behavior. Remember we looked at the SPY and they hadn't yet reached the monthly chart 20 period moving average, but guess what? The SMH did. Garden variety behavior, get a little bit far away from home base, come back to run a test at home base. It's a monthly chart, takes a long time for things to develop, but I thought I would bring it to the forefront. It's information we need to have. The weekly chart is on time. There's a method to the madness. One of the mystery charts you looked at earlier may be in this sector. Hey, you doing? If I told you how much I appreciate each and every one of you, without you, these videos are not possible. That is true and accurate information. We're pulling the ripcord here today. I'm David Frost, my strategic forecast. Thanks again for tuning in to another episode of Common Sense Market Analysis.